Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining today's session. I am David Giller, your host, and this session is Getting Started with Salesforce Reports for Sales Professionals. So before we jump into the material that I'm very eager to cover, let's get some webinar basics out of the way. So if you're not familiar with GoToWebinar, um, all of you are in um, listen-only mode. However, I want to make this as interactive as possible. And the way we're going to do that is by leveraging um, the side panel, the control panel that you have for GoToWebinar. There is a section there for questions where you can submit questions. Um, I'm, I will be leaving out a dedicated amount of time at the end to cover any questions. And at the same time, uh, if appropriate, I'm happy to jump in and simply answer a question as, as it comes up. So feel free to uh, leverage the question section on the right-hand side uh, since you're all in listen-only mode. And I want to make sure to cover any questions, concerns, issues, thoughts that you guys might have. Um, next up, I want to give you a little bit of background on myself. You, know, you might be wondering, who is this guy? Um, don't know really who he is, so um, let's cover a little bit of that. My name is David Giller. I am a certified Salesforce Sales Cloud consultant. I'm also one of the co-leaders of the New York Salesforce user group. I'm the author of the Getting Started in Salesforce series of eBooks available on the Amazon Kindle. I used to be over at GE Capital. I was an employee of uh, GE for over 15 years. Um, for about eight of those years, I was in a Salesforce related role where even though my official job title was uh, marketing manager, my unofficial title was Salesforce guru, uh, meaning um, questions, uh, best practices, training issues, uh, Questions like, hey, is it possible to do X, Y, Z in Salesforce? Or can you train this person on how to do whatever it is in Salesforce? Uh, typically came to me. I'm also an attorney. And for a little over four years, I was actually managing my own law practice on the Salesforce sales cloud. So I know what it's like to be an employee in a very large organization where we're leveraging Salesforce. I also know what it's like to be a business owner where you're relying on the Salesforce platform to um, find all of the information you need and to automate and streamline your own business processes. And as an attorney, instead of going to court with a uh, large briefcase on wheels filled with paper, I went to court with just an iPad. And I had access to not only uh, every document, every piece of information for the client that I was representing at that particular hearing, but I also had every document, every piece of information, every email for every prospect, as well as opposing counsel, as well as a judge or any paralegal that was working on any case. Uh, I also used to be over at uh, NBC Universal when I first joined GE. Uh, GE owned NBC and then later purchased Universal, merged it together to create NBC Universal. And uh, I was in an IT role over there for uh, quite a few years where I was managing some very large enterprise-wide IT projects uh, across NBC Universal. My company, Brainiate, I started up about three years ago uh, in order to help companies leverage the Salesforce platform. We provide Salesforce training solutions that help companies to increase their ROI on Salesforce licenses. As we all know, the licenses of Salesforce can cost quite a bit. And um, by leveraging, by rolling out the appropriate training methodology, training program uh, for companies, it helps them to actually get as much value as possible out of these, uh, the costs of the Salesforce licenses, which means tapping into all of the features and functionality that are appropriate for that business. We also help eliminate internal excuses very often, uh, regardless of the size of a company. Very often people will say that they didn't log their tasks or their customers or their prospects uh, or the meetings or deals that they're working on because they just didn't know how or it's so confusing. Well, by rolling out the appropriate training methodology, um, we essentially eliminate those excuses uh, because it becomes the equivalent after providing so many resources and best practices and trainings and recordings and documentation, perhaps. Uh, we are essentially eliminate the ability for someone to say with a confident, uh, with a confident voice to say, oh, yeah, I don't know how to do it because they're otherwise looked at as if they didn't know how to search for a particular book on Amazon. 
We also help improve Salesforce adoption. And what do we mean by that? It's not only a matter of uh, checking to see how many people are logging in because nobody's logging into Salesforce just for the sake of logging in and increasing the metrics of who's logged in how many times. What we're really looking to do uh, for any organization is to get cleaner data. To, get, uh, to eliminate the half-baked data, to improve transparency, and to improve collaboration within the organization. And those are the main reasons why most companies are, in fact, leveraging Salesforce in the first place. So by increasing adoption, we ultimately see cleaner data, improved transparency within the organization. We know who's doing what. We know what's going on with each of our customers, with each of our prospects on each deal uh, for each campaign, each customer service issue. And we also improve collaboration. Um, also, by rolling out the appropriate training methodology, we end up identifying additional processes within the organization to help further streamline and automate those processes on the Salesforce platform. At Brainiate, we help companies in many different industries, uh, as you can see, cutting across everything from uh, nonprofits to manufacturers, distributors, professional services, healthcare, financial services, and life sciences, etc. So what kind of results should you expect to get out of this webinar? Well, by learning and understanding how to leverage Salesforce reports, you will see increased efficiency and productivity. You should also see increased visibility and transparency because by finally being able to tap into the data that's already in Salesforce, regardless of who put it in, and to make it visible to actually see our customers, to see the activities that were open or closed, to see the deals that are in the pipeline. It helps to increase visibility and transparency, and it also helps to pull the data in order to see what's clean, what's dirty. What kind of duplicates do we have in the database? Who needs to clean those up? What process are we going to uh, leverage to clean up those duplicates? And we end up seeing faster results because guess what? When we're looking at a report of all of those deals that are stuck in the pipeline that haven't moved, that haven't been updated, when we see the cases, uh, the customer support cases that have been logged in Salesforce and have not been closed, someone will take action on it and it will ultimately result in getting faster closure and faster movement on all of those items. So now let's talk a little bit about the current frustrations that you guys have. And in order to do that, we're going to leverage the poll functionality within GoToWebinar. So I am about to uh, release a couple of different polls because I want to pull some information from you guys to get a better sense of what you are experiencing right now. So you should see a poll right now that asks about the, I'm curious to hear about the number of Salesforce users you guys have within your own organization. So use the options in GoToMeeting, no, I'm sorry, GoToWebinar, in order to submit your responses. I'm going to leave that open for another moment. Okay, so now let's share those results. So we can see that most of you uh, have between, have over 100 Salesforce users in your organization. So we see 42% of the respondents have between 101 and 500 Salesforce users. 33% of you have over 500 Salesforce users. Um, this, as, as, you can, as you heard from my background, this resonates very clearly with me. I totally get it, especially with larger organizations. Uh, very often we feel like we're, we're playing whack-a-mole to try to uh, get everyone up to speed on the latest features and functionality and try to train everyone in the organization, especially when people are moving around, people leave the company, people get promoted from a sales rep to a sales manager. There's new features and functionality they need to leverage in Salesforce. Uh, someone comes into the organization as an intern, so or someone comes in uh, even as a senior leader, someone comes in as a CMO, and they've never used Salesforce before, and they have no clue. How do I leverage uh, marketing? Uh, tools within the Salesforce platform. So um, great responses right there. And let's talk about how adoption is going on at your company. So overall, adoption of Salesforce at my company can be described as awesome. We all embrace the core fe CRM features of Salesforce. 
average. There's room for improvement. There were many people in the organization that need help. Or we are lost. We have, we have no Salesforce expertise on hand. So I'll give it another moment. You guys can think about it. It's completely anonymous. So you don't have to worry about this getting back to you. All right, let me close that poll and share the results with you. So it looks like most of you by far feel that uh, the adoption of Salesforce is average. And this is, by the way, pretty typical. Uh, there's room for improvement. There are many people that need help. Um, I would be worried, actually, if most of you felt that you were in the last category of being completely lost. But guess what? Even those of you who did respond that you're lost, um, don't 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 fret. This, this can be done. We can manage this. We take it one step at a time, just like with any type of uh, large project, large initiative. Uh, think of even from your own personal life experience, you know, whether you uh, are looking to move or start a new career, move into a new home, move to a new location, uh, uh, get fit. At first, it can seem incredibly intimidating. It can be very frustrating, but one baby step at a time, and you can make progress. And okay, it might take a while. It might take longer than you hope to reach the ultimate goal, but you can definitely make strides along the way to have some dramatic improvements day by day. So thank you for your feedback on that. Next up. Overall, I think our Salesforce users could benefit from additional training on. So let's hone in a little bit on what you think the areas of pain might be or the areas that need a little bit of attention. So are we talking about uh, managing leads, contacts, and accounts? Managing activities, meaning tasks and events? Managing opportunities? Managing campaigns? Or managing reports and dashboards? And I... I get it if the data might, if the results might be a little bit skewed, especially because this uh, particular webinar is focused on reports and dashboards. So by definition, uh, you know, people who are, uh, those of you who are attending this webinar, uh, it's because there's a particular need at least that you individually have to uh, further understand reports and dashboards. But I'd like to get an understanding of the organization as a whole, where you think the company might need some help or your team might need some help in further understanding Salesforce functionality. Okay, so let me show you what the results are here. Let's close that poll, share the results. So certainly by far, uh, again, not surprising. Uh, we're talking about r managing reports and dashboards. Um, it looks like what comes next up uh, second runner up <laughs> is um, managing of opportunities, so managing deals within the pipeline. And then uh, it seems like there's a tie after that between managing activities and managing leads, contacts, and accounts. And again, you could even see just by the set, and, and lastly is managing campaigns. This is completely understandable. Uh, not None of this is surprising. It's absolutely confirming. And even it's confirming for me, uh, having seen how Salesforce is deployed and being leveraged in many different companies, particularly in larger companies, not surprising whatsoever. Uh, for the, each of you on the call, this might be insightful and maybe even reassuring that what you're experiencing within your company is being shared by others. Um, and I can even uh, tell you that part of the solution for any solid training curriculum for your Salesforce users, or uh, it could be a training curriculum, or let's even uh, back up the bus a little bit, any approach to further hone in on these areas of functionality um, to make sure to elevate the usability and knowledge and understanding of these areas of functionality within your organization can be easily addressed just by even grouping out the area of focus and prioritizing the uh, content that you're going to share with your team based on the categories that we have listed right here. So this is all completely doable, and this allows us to see, all right, if we take care of reports and dashboards first, let's train our team on how to um, 
how to find reports and dashboards, how to use reports and dashboards, how to create brand new reports and dashboards. Um, that will alleviate the, the top tier of pain internally within the organization. And next up, once we feel done with that, let's move on to opportunities. And then after that, let's move on to leads, contacts, and accounts and managing activities, and then lastly, do campaigns. And you will see, just by taking those baby steps, you will see within your organization some dramatic improvement on uh, Salesforce usage, on the cleanliness of the data, on eliminating duplicates, identifying who are the winners and losers within the organization, who's really embracing it, who's not moving on their deals, um, who doesn't have any contacts in Salesforce. So this is all incredibly insightful. All right, and now let's focus in more specifically on the content at hand for this for this particular webinar of Salesforce reports. So I want to get an understanding, and I'm keeping it very basic, an understanding of your comfort level, your uh, expertise as it relates to creating Salesforce reports and editing existing Salesforce reports. So would you consider yourself a newbie? that you really haven't done this stuff before. You're a little bit rusty, you know some things, you're, um, you're kind of comfortable clicking around, but you're ready to learn more. Or you feel that you're more advanced and you're just looking to fine tune your skills. So I'll give it another moment or two for you guys to put in your responses. Okay. And by the way, this is the last survey, so don't feel exhausted or anything from it. All right, so here are the results that we have. And again, really not all that surprising. Um, most of you feel that you're a newbie, so you're all essentially, uh, or I should say most of you are in the same place. Um, and um, middle of the road is those who feel that they're a little bit rusty and are ready to learn more. And those of you who are more advanced, hopefully I can even during this basic session, introductory session to Salesforce reports, I can teach you some cool tricks too. So, all right, now let's get back into our, uh, hang on one second. All right, so looking back at uh, where we left off. So understanding your, we were talking about understanding your current frustrations talking about uh, the experiences that you have, the sense that you have within your organization of how Salesforce is being leveraged. And um, it seems like most of you are feeling the same thing. Which, so these, uh, these bullet points should resonate with you, that poor CRM usage typically results in not seeing the full ROI of the Salesforce licenses. It also typically results in having half-baked and dirty data. And then it, it also results in inefficiencies within the organization. Uh, you have some information that's stuck in, that, that's in Outlook. Some of it is in Post-it notes. Some of it is on paper. Some of it is in Excel spreadsheets or uh, God knows where. And it could also result in lost deals, which definitely hurts the bottom line of any organization. So what is the formula for success? So, okay, we, you know, we get the pain uh, that you're in and how do we actually resolve it? How do we address it? So the way, uh, the best way to do that is it's really incredibly simple. Um, understand the basics of Salesforce functionality. So become, we need to become familiar and the team needs to become familiar with how to do certain basic core Salesforce uh, features and then apply what we've learned because guess what if we just read it if we just watch the videos but never actually do it it is about the equivalent of trying to learn how to drive by reading a manual and watching youtube videos if you don't actually get in a car um and try some of the things that you're learning and of course you know as, as in with driving with a car yeah uh, driving a car you need to do it in a, a safe in a safe environment because you certainly don't want to drive yourself into a brick wall. The good thing is that with Salesforce, so long as you are not set up as an admin, if you are set up as an admin, uh, you, you could theoretically do some dangerous things by just playing around. You could unintentionally delete uh, bulk a bulk of data. However, for uh, general end users, you really don't have to be afraid. Uh, to do things in Salesforce and play around with the features and functionality. Think of it like, uh, you know, you get you, you get a new iPhone and you've never seen an iPhone before. Um, playing around with the features and functionality, it's 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 highly unlikely you will make the thing self-destruct. Um, so go ahead and play around with it. So watch 
videos, uh, attend webinars, do the training sessions in whatever format they're in, uh, read up on blogs, um, and then actually leverage, utilize the learnings that you've got. Basic stuff. Now, let's acknowledge some of the current obstacles and objections that we have, because what I just what I just suggested is really not rocket science. Uh, but what is stopping um, most people, most organizations from actually doing what I just suggested? Well, typically, these are the six most common responses that I've seen working with organizations, uh, particularly larger organizations where they have Salesforce or paying a lot of money for Salesforce, and for various reasons, the team isn't uh, using it. So typically what comes out of the mouths of, of most employees is, oh, I don't have enough time to learn how to, how to do this stuff, or we don't have enough people. We need more people to really be in the know of uh, how to leverage Salesforce, or we need more people to actually do the training for our employees to provide those, those training uh, courses and the reviews and provide the hand-holding services for some of our employees to get them to really learn how to use the tool. Or we don't have enough of a budget uh, dedicated, There is, or there is no budget dedicated to Salesforce. Uh, I've also seen many companies that say, no, we can't watch those videos and we can't uh, read up on any of the materials that we see elsewhere because we're different. We, d we just operate very differently. Uh, or they say, you know what, we're just, we're not technical. Or we're just so overwhelmed, there's so much information and there's so ma there are so many features available with Salesforce that we're just too overwhelmed and we really don't know where to start. So let's get real. How, how do we apply the formula? So I'm not negating any of those obstacles, any of those objections that come in. I get it. I totally get it. Um, how do we actually apply them? How do we address those issues while also addressing the need for providing uh, that knowledge and elevating the comfort level within any organization of how to use Salesforce? It's actually incredibly simple. Three-step approach. So first... We need to get an understanding of the current business nuances, the priorities, and the existing Salesforce customizations. Then we need to deploy a CRM training curriculum that is mandatory for all users. Just like when it comes to uh, compliance, uh, legal HR issues on uh, harassment in the workplace, on, on um, standard processes that we have within the organization. This should be a mandatory curriculum that is rolled out to all of those individuals that are expected to be using Salesforce. And as you can see from the bullet points that I have listed here, we're talking about the basics. We're not talking about anything crazy here. So the basics of how to use the core CRM features and functionality. After a mandatory CRM training curriculum is rolled out across the organization, and best practice is to have these sessions recorded for future archive purposes, so that this way, as people move around the, in the organization, people who missed it because they had a schedule conflict, uh, people come into the company, people are hired after the a week after the training happens, there's a recording available. So, or there are multiple recordings available for them to access in order to leverage the training that has already happened. And after the mandatory CRM training uh, curriculum is rolled out, maintenance is absolutely critical because people need some handholding. People need more support. And guess what? On a quarterly basis, if you're not familiar with it, on a quarterly basis, Salesforce rolls out new features, new functionality all the time. And keeping your employees, keeping your team up to date on how to leverage those features and functionality is critical. Aside from the new features that Salesforce rolls out, every business has enhanced some evolved business processes, some tweaks that we need to make to our business process. And then the question becomes, what gap is there within Salesforce in order to make sure that Salesforce is in sync with streamlining, automating, supporting those new business processes. So a lot of times there are issues, there are some ideas that come up, there are new trends that come up where new features might be needed or uh, simply more fine tuning of training might be needed. So the best way that I found to address this, and by the way, this is precisely what I did when I was at uh, GE, uh, at GE Capital, we had 
um, many different sub-businesses all using the same instance of Salesforce, uh, nearly 2,000 users across the United States all using the same one instance of Salesforce um, and trying to herd everyone together uh, into one room uh, was, was quite a challenge. So basically uh, what we did was uh, we rolled out essentially a lunch and learn program. And even though we're borrowing the term lunch and learn, uh, everyone was really sitting at their desks and it was doing it we were doing it remotely, where we put together an agenda. Here's what we're going to talk about. Um, and it was scheduled, whether it's weekly or biweekly. It could be for an hour. It could be for an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and sort of treating it like open hour, uh, open office hours, where people can attend and come with any questions, any concerns uh, related to the particular topic at hand. And the bullet points that I have listed here, these are essentially um, some ideas to help you in terms of providing the type of content that is needed um, or that I, I should say um, could dramatically improve the substance of what is being shared during these lunch and learn sessions. So we can address common issues, some, uh, share some internal success stories. And by the way, the internal success stories is probably the best way to get adoption within any organization. But you can't get to the internal success stories until we do everything else up above, where all you have is one employee who says, oh my gosh, I closed the biggest deal of my life last week, and here's how I did it. If I didn't have Salesforce, there's no way I would have been able to access the information and uh, use the right keywords and get the timing right with the customer in order to nail that deal. Sharing ideas, sharing information that, uh, or simply the fact that the Salesforce success community exists, let alone specific content that is being shared in the Salesforce success community. Um, some information just regarding local user groups, YouTube videos. Uh, there are a ton of blogs, podcasts, uh, LinkedIn posts, Twitter posts, Facebook posts, all associated with uh, best practices, tips, techniques, new features, all uh, regarding Salesforce. So now that we got that uh, out of the way, let's dive in and start talking about reports and dashboards in Salesforce. So you could see right now, you could uh, you see my screenshot uh, showing the reports tab in Salesforce. And by the way, if you don't currently have the reports tab available, um, simply click on the little plus sign that is all the way to the right. Uh, on the on the tab bar going across the top, there's a little plus sign on the right. And if you click on the little plus sign on the right, your page will refresh. And it will look like this one where you're essentially seeing the equivalent of a site map of all of the different areas of functionality that you have access to see in Salesforce. And you simply click on uh, reports in order to get back to the reports tab. So now I'm going to take you through some of the different components of the reports tab because I think it's, a, it's absolutely critical to first get an understanding of what's going on on the screen here. So we're going to talk about the features and functionality on the left-hand side of the screen that's highlighted right now. And basically this is showing the different folders that you have access to see. And as we can see right here, there's a listing of different folders. And at the very top, there is a search box. And I will always say the search box, just like in Google, the search box in Salesforce is your best friend. That is the best way to find information really quickly. So if you're looking for a particular folder, you know that either you have a shared folder within your team or there's a folder that you accessed uh, recently and that's where certain reports exist that you, that you need to find. Uh, you can certainly just scroll on the bottom, uh, you know, based on my screenshot, there's not all that many folders uh, there, so it's not all that overwhelming to find the particular folder that you need. But over time, you can continuously create new folders, and it can get a little messy. You can have a, an incredibly long list of different folders uh, appearing on your screen. So the best thing to do is really leverage the search box on the upper left-hand portion of the screen in order to simply type in any keywords associated with that folder. So if you're looking for a particular folder that has a certain keyword like sales, so I just start typing S-A-L, I'm not even typing the full word of sales, just by typing a couple of letters, you will immediately see all of the folders on the left-hand side that matches whatever keywords you put in, or I should say whatever characters you put in in the search box. Now by um, looking at any of these entries, any of the folders that appear on the left-hand side, you will also notice um, that there is a little push pin icon 
appearing on the right when you hover over it. And when you click on that little push pin, you have a couple of different options. So the options that you see, and even the, uh, whether or not you see the push pin, all depends on the sharing settings and the admin rights uh, or the read-write access that you have to that particular folder. So if you have uh, read-write access, you will see the options that I have here down below on the lower right-hand side where it says edit and delete, where I can delete the entire folder. If I do not have access to delete the folder, I will not see that option for delete. But if there are folders that you need to access or you seem to be accessing on a regular basis, you can absolutely leverage that first option, which says pin to top. And what that will do is it will push that particular folder all the way to the top. So you don't have to scroll down. You don't have to search for it ever again. Incredibly powerful tip. So by uh, selecting any of the folders on the left-hand side, once you find the folder that you need on the left-hand side, simply clicking on it will update the right-hand portion of the screen, the main portion of the screen, in order to show all of the contents of that particular folder. So by clicking on any of the folders on the left, it will update the screen on the right to show the contents of that folder. And now I can see um, all of the different reports that exist within that folder. I can also see the description. And we see that there are a couple of different columns appearing uh, across the top, giving me some more insight into each of these different uh, reports that exist in the folder. So now that we're sort of shifting gears and we're moving over to the right-hand side of the screen, I want to cover some of the features that, uh, that we have on the top. Under the word All Folders, you can see that there is a search box. So we've got, we actually have three search boxes on the screen. The global search all the way on the very top next to the logo, all the way on the very top where it says Search. That searches across all of Salesforce. On the left-hand side, we have the search just for the folders where uh, I was showing you a couple of minutes ago where you can search for a specific folder. And the search box that we have right here will allow you to search specifically for any report or dashboard. So doing any search in here, will it won't search a, a folder name. It will search for the name of or the name or description of any report or dashboard that you have access to see in Salesforce. On the right-hand side, we have two different drop-downs. So, oh, by the way, I meant to cover. <laughs> on the left-hand side, when you leverage the search on the, on the left-hand side, the one that's, uh, where it says all folders, when you start typing in keywords, just like we had in the folder section in the search box associated with folders, um, if we type in any keywords over here, the search results will automatically be updated in order to show all of the entries that match your criteria before you even hit uh, enter on the keyboard. Let's talk about the, the drop-downs that appear on the right-hand side of the screen. So we've got two drop-downs here, one that says recently viewed and the other one that says all types. So um, where it says recently viewed, if you click on the drop-down, you will see there are, there are a couple of different options here. So the options, uh, include all items, items uh, recently viewed, items I've created, and items that I've subscribed to. Choosing any one of these options will automatically update the reports or, uh, and dashboards visible on the screen based on whatever option you choose in the dropdown. The next dropdown will allow you to further filter to see either reports or dashboards. And now we're going to focus a little bit more on the different columns that are appearing on the screen. So we have uh, right now columns of action, name, uh, et cetera, going across on the right. So what we're going to do at this point is let's dive into the uh, live demo of Salesforce, where I will show you how we can move these columns around, readjust the columns, and then hide or display certain columns. So let me switch the mode over here to share my entire screen.
And as you can see, I'm going to click on the Reports tab. And as I described earlier, we've got uh, the search box over here where if I just start typing, search results are going to get updated immediately. And what I uh, want to highlight right now is the features that we see over here are going across the top with these different columns. So first up, um, we can see that next to the word name, there is a little arrow going up. This is indicating that right now the uh, all of the results that appear on my screen are sorted alphabetically based on the name of the entry, the name of the report or dashboard. If I simply click anywhere on this header, it will automatically change that sort order. So it just went from ascending into descending order. And I can keep toggling back and forth as I deem appropriate. And by the way, that holds true for any of the columns. So here I can click on any column and we can see that it's automatically adjusting to be in ascending or descending order. In case you're wondering what on earth this little icon is all about, this icon uh, that looks like a calendar on a clock, that represents whether or not, that indicates whether or not a particular report is set for future distribution. Um, and I'm going to show you what that's about in a little bit. Um, but there is actually some other neat tricks over here that you may or may not be aware of. Hovering over any of the columns on the top of the screen will reveal a little um, arrow pointing down on any of these columns. And if I click on that little arrow, there are a couple of other options that appear on the screen. So the first two, okay, I talked about those earlier. You can uh, go, you can click here to sort in ascending or descending order. That's great. You don't necessarily, it's kind of extra clicks in order to click on the arrow in order to get there. But those features are here as well. What I'd really like to show you is a section over here where it says columns. And those of you, by the way, who are familiar with iTunes, you might, uh, uh, this might this might look very familiar to you because we have similar functionality in iTunes as well as many other tools to um, hide or display certain columns. So I could see here which columns are being displayed as well as which are available to add onto my display. So I'm going to go here and simply click on create a date and let's do it again. Let's click on last modified by and last modified date. And by doing that, I can now see all of those entries appearing on the screen. So looking at all of the reports that appear here, I can now see all of those columns as well. Now at the same time, sorry, just adjusting my screen over here. Um, at the same time, I might say to myself, you know what, that's cool, but um, I don't really want them sorted in this order. Perhaps I want folder, which is now appearing all the way on the right. Perhaps I want that moved over over here to be before last modified date. So if you simply go to any of the columns appearing on the top and click on it and just drag it over, you can just drop it anywhere and re-update um, or resort the way your columns are displayed. So if I have last modified date, last modified by, okay, those are cool. I want to put those there. Um, I have created date, and then I've got this indicator over here of whether or not it's being sent for distribution. Uh, and, the, and to the right of that, I have created by. Well, I might want to swap these two. So let me just um, click on that header for that calendar icon and just drag it over to the right and just drop it here. So now that I might feel, okay, you know, these columns are good, um, but as you saw a moment ago, I had to sort of play around with the zoom on my screen in order to make everything fit. So if I go back here, things don't fit, and this is kind of annoying to me. So I could also readjust the columns, the width of the columns, by simply moving my cursor in between any of these two columns, you can see that the cursor changes from a pointer to an arrow, and then I can simply click and readjust the columns. And I can just keep doing that until I feel good about the way everything's displayed. 
By the way, if anyone has questions, you can feel free to, I just want to remind everyone, you can leverage the questions uh, functionality in the GoToWebinar control panel in order to uh, submit any questions that you guys might have. So at this point, I feel good about um, adjusting the columns. You're familiar with the reports tab. So clicking on the reports tab, I, I now get it in terms of what I see over here. So just clicking on it again, refreshing the screen. And I have the uh, folder section on the left. I know how to search for different folders, to browse around different folders. I know that by clicking on a particular folder, the screen is going to update in order to show all of the contents of that particular folder. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, go ahead and actually access a particular report. So um, let's go ahead and click on any of these reports. And by clicking on the report, I can now see the contents of that report. So I'd like to explain a little bit about what's going on on the screen here right now. So looking at the contents of any report in Salesforce gives you some features and functionality going across the top over here. So let's explain what that's all about. Uh, first of all, you can see over here where we've got the option summarize information by, and there are lots of different options. This is basically showing me all of the different fields available for this particular report. So if I'm looking at this report and I would like to see all of the information sorted um, I'm sorry, summarized by, let's say, industry. We see industry is appearing on the left. I want to have it summarized by industry. I can simply go over here and look for account industry. Hit run report. And my report was instantly updated in order to sort and summarize all of the results by industry. Pretty neat feature there. Next up, we have this drop down where it says show. And uh, the options here will all depend, the options that you see on the top will all depend on the particular report that you're looking at. So because I chose a report that focuses on accounts and contacts, the options that I have here relate to uh, filtering for my contacts, my accounts, my team's accounts, and all accounts. And by the way, if you're confused, what does my team's accounts mean? Uh, if I am a manager and I have four people reporting into me, this will allow me to see all of the accounts owned by my team, all of my direct reports. That's what that will do. So I can easily just go right here and then click run report and the uh, query against the database will be refreshed and it will show me, so the Salesforce report will automatically show me all of those records that match the criteria that I've specified based on whichever option I choose here. Next up, we have on the right hand side, uh, a little box that says time frame, And this is also incredibly powerful functionality here. So this will allow me to choose any date that is available based on, again, the type of report that I'm looking at. So since this is an account and contacts report, I can, perhaps I want to see all of those accounts that were last modified. And if I want to choose a particular time period, I could do that right here. So I've got this drop down that allows me to choose any type of uh, logical sequencing. So I can say uh, last modified in the last 30 days. We could see that the dates are automatically populated here. And now I could just click run report. And the report is now updated to now only show me those accounts that were last modified in the last 30 days. If I have a particular uh, custom date range that I would like to implement, I can simply choose custom. And I can go right here and say, you know what, I only want to see those that were updated between uh, January the 11th and January the 15th. And I can hit run report. And look at that, I have no results. So some incredibly powerful features here. Let me just clear this out so we can get some results back. So now I'd like to explain some of the tabs that we have going across the top here. So the first one, um, like I just uh, like you've seen a moment ago, um, the first one that says run report, 
Uh, we need to click on that button if we're going to make any change in the upper portion of the screen to these quick filters. Uh, we need to click Run Report to actually execute the query against the database. Now, depending on the settings that you have uh, in Salesforce, the way you were set up uh, by your admin, uh, you may or may not see this. So if you don't have it, and this is a feature that you need, uh, I suggest you make the recommendation to your Salesforce admin, uh, make the case for you. If you need my help, let me know, uh, to make the case for you to uh, open up these features for you. So if you click on this little arrow, pointing down, you will see a feature on my screen here that says schedule future runs. So suppose I'm looking at this report and I want to see, uh, let's take a use case here, um, all of those that, all of my accounts that were created, let's say in the last, uh, last seven days, right? So this is a report showing all of my accounts that were created in the last seven days. And if I click run report and it will update, I don't have any accounts that were met in the last seven that were created in the last seven days. But suppose this is a report that I would like to have emailed to me once a week because it's always going to show those accounts that were created in the last seven days. Now, by the way, you can apply this use case for I want to see if I'm a manager, I want to see all of the accounts that my team, all of the accounts, all of the contacts, all of the opportunities, all of the activities that my team, that my direct reports have created or have completed uh, in the last seven days, in the last two weeks, in the last 60 days. Um, and I would like to have this report emailed out to me on a regular basis. So I'm going to go here and click schedule future runs. And now the page is going to update. And now I have this uh, a screen that will allow me to choose the frequency and timing of this report getting emailed out to me. So suppose I want this emailed out to me on a weekly basis. I want it emailed out to me Friday, let's say Friday afternoon. I can choose the start and end date. So if I want it emailed out to me starting today and let's say until the end of June. I'm sorry, the 1st of June. And then I can choose what time I want it emailed out to me. So I can choose over here from the different time slots available. And the times that you will see on your screen all depend on uh, which edition of Salesforce you have and how many other scheduled reports are already set up for your organization for that time slot. And by the way, you can see up on top, I can also choose whether or not I would like to share this particular report with others within my company. So I can sh I can choose to share it with other groups, people in s in certain roles, or I can handpick certain individuals that I would like to see this report as well. And then I can just go here and click Save Report Schedule. And for now, uh, let me narrow down the date because I really do not want this emailed out to me on a regular basis. Uh, so Save Report Schedule. And let's see, oh, I didn't choose a time after updating the date. So let's say seven o'clock. And I'm back looking at the report. And now this report is going to get emailed out to me on based on the schedule, me and others based on the schedule that I just set up. And just for confirmation of that, let's go back into the reports tab and look to see what's going on here. And now I can see that this particular report that I just set up for scheduling is now appearing with a little checkbox indicating that it is set up for future distribution. So uh, Bob asked a question. I'll cover it now. Why not? Um, how far back can you adjust the settings for the um, for the date range? And the answer is as far back as you like. So um, really depends on the data that you have in Salesforce. What do I mean by that? So we have a couple of, we have a lot of different options over here, preset date ranges. Uh, but if I want to go back and suppose my company has been using Salesforce uh, for many years now, I can say, you know what, I want to uh, go back to um, 2000 to today and hit run report. And that's it. Done. So you can use any range depending on the data that you have in Salesforce. Not a problem. 
So I was talking about the uh, buttons going across the top over here. So we had run report. The next one is high detail. So if I go back and summarize this report by industry, as I had earlier, uh, summarize it by industry, and I click run report. So now we're looking at the summary, and I would like to hide the details so that I can just see, because right now all I care about is seeing all of the total number of how many accounts I have based on whatever summary I chose to display. We're going to jump into customize in a moment. Just want to quickly go over some of the other features that are here. I want to be cognizant of the time. So we have save, save as, delete. These work just like in any Microsoft Office tool. Save will simply save over. So if I made changes to the particular report and I want to overwrite the prior version of the report, I can simply click the save button. Save as will make a cloned copy where I can give a new name to this particular report so I am not overriding the prior version. Delete will delete the report itself. Printable view will allow me to download in Excel format a view that looks just like whatever I see on the screen. So if I download it in Excel right now, I will see what exactly what I see on the screen here, but it will be in Excel. Export details um, will actually give me the raw data um, that matches all of the columns and all of the data that appears in this report. So it would show me all of the data here, but it would not have the summary. Um, industry would actually appear as another column. If I click export details, it will show it to me purely in Excel format. Add to campaign if I have an existing campaign in Salesforce. And um, based on the query that I did in this report, I realized, you know what? I want to include everyone in this report in a particular campaign. I can simply click this Add to Campaign button, and it will allow me to search existing campaigns in Salesforce to add those individuals into that particular campaign. So at this point, I, uh, if I realize that I need to make a, a bunch of real changes to this uh, particular report. I want to add some additional columns. I want to apply additional filters here. I need to go ahead and click on the Customize button. So clicking on the Customize button will update my screen dramatically. And waiting for it to respond. Here we go. And now let me explain what's going on on the screen here. So this screen might be brand new to most of you, especially since most of you indicated that you're newbies. So now we are in full edit mode. Before, when we were looking at the report, leveraging the features on the top of the screen, uh, we were just doing some quick filtering. Now we are in full-blown edit mode where we can really change around um, pretty much everything on this report. So on the left-hand side of the screen, we have a display of all of the different fields that are available to us in this report. So suppose, for example, I want to see the street address. I want to include it in this in the report itself. So I just start typing. I can certainly scroll down on uh, going across on the left hand side, but I could just start typing the word street and I can grab over here mailing street and just drag it over and pop it in on the report wherever I like. And then I could do the same thing for a city. And I can just drag it and drop it wherever I want it to appear in the report. Now, at the same time, while I dragged uh, some of these fields over here on the, uh, on the left, suppose for a moment uh, there are some fields that I realize I no longer need. Maybe I no longer need to display industry. It's, it's, it's irrelevant for me right now. So I could just grab this field over here and just drag it all the way over to the left and just drop it, and it's gone. Now, at the same time, perhaps I would like to uh, include a filter in this report. So perhaps I want to see all of those. Let's look for some of the states that we have here. So let's bring in a mailing state. And I want to choose all of those. I only want to see those people in the state of Texas. So I'm going to click on the field for mailing state, and I'm going to drag it over into the upper portion of the screen. And now it is allowing me to create a filter here where I can say mailing state equals Texas. And we see that up above, we have some date filters. Those are the same date filters that I had earlier. For now, I'm going to simply leave it alone. And then I can just hit OK. And now we can see in, we're in preview mode. We can see that the uh, results are immediately updated 
to show only those people who are in Texas. Now that I'm looking at people who are only in Texas, I no longer need to display Texas in my report. It's completely redundant. Suppose I'm planning a particular trip. I'm a sales rep. I'm, I'm planning a trip uh, to Dallas, and I want to group everyone by city because I will be looking around at different cities. So I simply grabbed the column for a city and just dropped it into this bar going across where it says drop a field here to create a grouping. And now I can see everyone grouped by city. If I'd like to add a chart into this report, so I can simply click the add a chart button. And suppose I want to look at it as a pie chart. I can simply leverage that option up above. Hit OK. Click run report. And I'm now looking at my a brand new report showing me only those people in the state of Texas grouped by city. So let me show you a simple shortcut so that you can, now that you have the basics of how to use Salesforce reports, um, I want to show you some shortcuts to create uh, reports that you need to show you your customers, your pipeline, your activities. So if you look in Salesforce, you should be able to see some default uh, folders that are appearing on the left. And these are default folders that Salesforce puts out with every new instance of Salesforce. So you can see over here we have accounts and contact reports. So if I want to pull a brand new report, I can simply click on any one of these. We have opportunity reports. So if I want to see all of my opportunities that are stuck, simply click on that. You will see the results. And you can easily filter based on whatever criteria you deem appropriate. You can then go ahead and so you see I have instantly I got myself a uh, pipeline report. And now if I want to further customize the report, I can go ahead and click the customize button. I can remove or add any columns as I deem appropriate, as well as any additional um, filters that I would like to further refine that report. So we can see over here on the left-hand side, we also have activity reports. So if I want to look at all of um, my tasks, all of the tasks that I delegated to others, um, we can easily do that by leveraging the out-of-the-box reports, that's folders and reports that Salesforce has provided for us. Um, I've been working on a daily sales report. I'm looking at one of the questions. Uh, so, Bob, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll follow up with you offline on that particular question. Um, let me go in with just to make sure that I covered everything that I wanted to. So here we have the different buttons. This is the chart that I showed you. We've got the search results down below. I showed you how we can leverage the fields appearing on the left. We've got the filters uh, and additional drop downs in the upper portion of the screen. And this is where we have the filters displayed. We have different options over here. I didn't show it to you live in the system, but I certainly want to make sure you uh, see it now. We have different options available on the screen uh, related to uh, the, the formatting of any particular report that we're looking at. Let me actually update my screen so that you can see this a little bit better. We have the search results appearing down below. And if I go ahead and click the new report button, so on the reports tab, we have this button that says new reports, uh, new report. And by simply clicking on that button, it will automatically bring me to another screen that looks like this one. And I showed you how you can leverage the out-of-the-box default folders and reports that Salesforce provided. But at the same time, you can absolutely leverage, um, create a new report for yourself. And based on the type of report that you'd like to create, simply use the search box to identify if it's an opportunity report, it's a report on leads, contacts, accounts, et cetera. Showed you how to leverage some of the um, default folders and reports that Salesforce provided. Also want to show you that you can leverage the same reports that you can access on the uh, desktop. You can also access them on your iPad and iPhone. So hopefully you uh, 
got a lot out of this webinar. Uh, for more in-depth customized Salesforce training for your team, uh, remember there are basically three steps. First is to understand the nuances within your business. Um, deploy a mandatory CRM curriculum and maintain that through lunch and learn programs. So if uh, you're interested in leveraging some of the, uh, to get a deeper understanding, uh, I'm sorry, if you're interested in uh, leveraging our services in order to help your Salesforce users further uh, unleash the power of Salesforce, uh, where we can get a deeper understanding of the um, features of Salesforce for your team to provide a customized curriculum for your team and a structured lunch and learn program. You can simply click in the chat window of this webinar. Um, you will see a link where you can click on that link in that go to webinar chat window in order to uh, simply um, reach out to us. Let us know um, if you're interested and we can set up time to further chat. At this point, uh, let's look to see if there are any additional questions that you guys might have. All right, so it looks like there aren't any other questions. So I thank all of you for uh, joining us today and have a wonderful weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.